Lawyers of Reddit, what are the most common laws people understand incorrectly? Many people think that if the police, in the USA, don't read you your Miranda rights when you're arrested it means you win the case. Not so, it only means that you may get things you said excluded from trial, if you said them in response to police interrogation while in custody. I got arrested and they didn't read my rights until we got back to the station. Unlike in movies and TV where they read them right away usually, the whole time I had a shred of hope that they would forget and I would get off because of it haha. <laughs> Lawyer here. I like when people say I'll see you in court. UHH no you won't. Most of us rarely ever go through a full blown jury trial like on TV. We avoid jury trials as they are expensive and time consuming. But saying my attorney will see your attorney at a settling table at one of their offices to work out a reasonable agreement doesn't quite have the same effect. The European Court of Human Rights has nothing to do with the EU. I actually did not know this. That some of your rights only apply to the government. Yes, as a private citizen, or Busanesana, I can certainly inhibit your rights to free speech. Businesses are not required to accept your £10 bag of pennies because it's legal tender it just means that you can use that to pay in debts that you have, and as you are not in debt to that business, yes they can refuse your legal tender. This concept came up on Reddit a while back. What I took from it was McDonald's can refuse your money but Applebee's can't. That only the government or government employees acting in their official capacity can violate a person's federal constitutional rights. To use a somewhat outdated example, the Duck Dynasty guy has a First Amendment right to say what he wants, but A and E can fire him for it, call him up, rehire him, fire him for being a gun owner, call him up, rehire him again, and fire him for petitioning the government. They may be violating American ideals, state constitutions, or federal and state statutes, but they are not violating his First Amendment rights because the Constitution only binds the federal government and, selectively, state governments through the 14th Amendment. A and E is not a government entity, so the federal constitution doesn't prohibit it from doing anything. I hate how no one on my Facebook seems to understand this. Pleading insanity means getting off. Generally you go to the mental health facility until you are cured. Possible forever. Well just until a board of doctors are willing to bet their reputations you won't break any more laws. Instead of prison for x years. Note, people are thinking of jury nullification which I as an attorney, might not be allowed to tell you about. The amount of time spent locked up after a verdict of not guilty by reason of insanity is almost always longer than the amount of time that would have been served if found guilty. Basic federalism principles. The idea that federal law trumps state law. Marijuana may have been legalized in a given state, but you are still breaking federal law, which still classifies marijuana as a Schedule 1 controlled substance. So sure, the state police won't arrest you, but the D can still arrest you. Furthermore, and I cannot stress this enough, if you are in federal territory of any kind, marijuana is illegal. California respects medical marijuana. If you have a card that's great, but once you step onto Yosemite National Park, it is illegal, and the Eastern District of California is more than welcome to prosecute your rear end for possession. Age of consent. Most states have a sliding scale. In Missouri, it's 17. But if you're under 21, your partner can be 14 years old. However, child P laws are different. You can legally have sex with your 17 year old partner, but you cannot take pictures of it. There is case law on exactly this situation. Also, marginal tax rates, more accounting than legal, but they are tax laws. A lot of people believe that your entire income is taxed at a certain rate based on how much income you made that year. Rather, it's a sliding scale where the first portion is not taxed at all, then another portion is taxed at a low percentage, then the next portion is taxed higher, and so on. If I knew the percentages, I would quote them, but I'm not looking them up. Full stop. Sadly, the ACA was not created this way and can create some really dangerous income issues for people receiving subsidies. They cannot arrest a husband and wife for the same crime. If you don't sign any documents you can't be found guilty. Take to the sea. You've got the worst F king attorneys. Do not remove this tag under penalty of law except by the consumer. No, you won't go to jail for ripping tags off mattresses or pillows. 
the consumer is allowed to remove the tag, not a lawyer. This just annoys me. Are you sure? Oh and I also still get tons of calls asking if they can get a divorce for adultery or abandonment. This despite the fact that most states, Ohio and New York being the only holdouts, did away with fault divorce over 30 years ago. In Kentucky we went to no fault divorce in 1973. Long story short, in an argument with my then wife while on the phone with my lawyer, found out she had cheated. She screamed that infidelity was not grounds for divorce. My lawyer replied she is correct but infidelity is grounds for a custody suit. Bird law. People think they can keep hummingbirds as pets but they're illegal tender. Not saying I agree, it's just the bird law in this country. It's not governed by reason. No lawyer but I'm in law school right now and many people in Germany don't exactly know the lifelong prison sentence. It's not really lifelong like some people believe, it's imprisonment for an indefinite time period but minimum 15 years. The average lifelong prison term is about 20 years. This varies by country, and in the USA, by state, if you get a life sentence in the state of Pennsylvania, you will die in prison, barring appeals or revocation of sentence. Other states, like California, are like Germany where a life sentence can mean you are eligible for parole after a predetermined amount of time. <laughs> Lawyer here, all of them, people are idiots, redditors especially. This is slander, I'm going to sue. How your stuff gets distributed when you die, no, it does not all go to your husband wife, most of the time, no, your $10 legal zoom rocket lawyer will is not good enough most of the time, the estate planning attorneys do not pay the bills by selling wills powers of attorney, people who die without wills or with poorly drafted wills keep our lights on. Not a lawyer, but Breaking Bad taught me that, contrary to popular belief, Undercover police officers are not required to answer truthfully when you ask are you a cop? Long story short, don't sell drugs. I never quite understood how people could believe this was possible. Oh wow have I been waiting for this question. 1. Being protected from discrimination does not mean you are protected from jerk off buttholes. In other words, your employer and or co-worker is allowed to decide he doesn't like you, which means he has discriminated between you and another person, so long as he hasn't made that decision based upon your race, color, or religious belief. In other words, you are not entitled to employment. The only thing you are entitled to is not to be discriminated against based upon something out of your control such as your skin color or your gender. 2. The age at which a child in the United States can decide which parent they wish to reside with is. Wait for it. 18. Yes, that's right. If you are a child, you are not allowed to make decisions for yourself. That is up to the family court judge to make based upon the best interests of the child. 3. We have free speech in this country. That means that if someone says something to you that you don't like, you cannot sue them for libel or slander unless all of the following apply. 1. IT is false. 2. IT has been communicated to a third party, not just to you. 3. IT affects your reputation for morality in the community and 4. You have suffered either both emotional or physical health repercussions as a result of the statement, or financial repercussions, or all three. Note, there are certain things that if said, do not require number. 4. Such as, a statement that you have a venereal disease, that is called slander per se, but these are rare statements so, usually, you need number 4. Double jeopardy thanks to the movie of the same name. Actually a lawyer here, which may seem odd given how many I'm not a lawyer but posts they have been in here. There's likely a decent reason for that. We don't want any of you to think we've given you some kind of legal advice that you're going to end up relying on that turns out wrong for wherever you live. For example, if you're in Ohio, I could probably give you some solid advice. Any of the other 49 states or any other countries? Not so much. Sure, there are general rules that we all get from the SCOTUS, but even that can be open to interpretation by the lower courts, and SCOTUS typically sets floors or ceilings. Miranda, for example, sets forth the minimum warnings that police are supposed to give you. Some state could easily add more warnings to that, so that makes it kind of hard for us to give you guys advice on this stuff because depending on where you live, we might be wrong. A hostile work environment is not illegal in and of itself. 
It's only unlawful if, among other things, the hostility is based on a protected characteristic such as race, gender, age, disability, religion, etc. In short, it's not illegal for your boss to be in butthole. It's illegal for the butthole to single people out because they belong to a protected class though. You can't yell movie in a crowded firehouse. People really seem to struggle with the concept of their rights in regards to child protective services. CPS can and will talk to your child at school without you giving consent first. CPS generally does not deal with warrants although if you are not cooperative they will ask a judge to order that they be allowed into the home. Demanding that a CPS representative produce a warrant only makes you look insane. Speaking of insane, if you have an untreated mental illness that could potentially put your child at risk of harm then CPS can absolutely ask you to get help or to put your child with someone who can make sure your child will be safe. People love to shout mental health discrimination at that, as if it's a magic bullet that will shut down the case. I could go on for days. It seems like nobody understands entrapment. Just because you sold drugs to an undercover police officer does not mean you were entrapped. Entrapment entails committing a crime that you otherwise would not have committed. For instance, going out of your way to buy a bag of drugs for an undercover cop because he asked you to do so. I'm not a lawyer, but I think people commonly confuse assault and battery. Assault, threat of imminent harm, battery, and lawful physical contact. You are right, you are not a lawyer and those definitions change depending on location, even around the US. I'm a law student, stand your ground laws. I have lost count of the amount of laymen I've met that seem to believe stand your ground amounts to something that means you can shoot anyone who enters your home. That is not the case. In Canada, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms only protects you from the government impeding the rights laid out in the document, not from other private entities doing it. In the UK, if I punch you from behind that's battery. If you see me punching you assault and battery, assault is fearing imminent violence upon yourself. It is not someone punching you, it is what happens before someone punches you and you fear being attacked. You have been visited by the water puppy you will be blessed with sunny beach days, but only if you comment swim safe, papa. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check out another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.